So, like I said, on this one, we're going to want to modify some of our Lua code from the 64-bit program to actually work with the 32-bit program. So let's go ahead and launch the 32-bit tutorial. Um, didn't actually save a table for this one, so I'm just going to kind of step through everything here. We're going to get to that step six. Basically, we just want to be able to read these four bytes as an integer, and that's it. Um, and that's really going to be the main difference, because like I said, 64-bit, we've got to read those and add that to this address, but 32-bit, all we've got to do is just read those four bytes. And that's the actual address here. Okay. That's the actual address that we're getting here. So let's go ahead and look at our functions from the 64-bit program. Um, basically everything else we're going to mostly want to do the same. So we're going to want to do our AOB string um, or get our, a, you know, get our AOB address the same way and do all that. It'll only be when we get down to here that we're going to want to do it differently. Um, even there we can still leave that the same. It's really just how we get to that base address. It's going to be a little different here. Um, basically, the way we want to check this is target is 64-bit. Anyway, so the target is 64-bit, basically true if it is, and true if it's not, or false if it's not. So then else here, we're going to want to deal with it as if it's 32-bit. Um, so really all we want to do is basically something similar to this, except we're going to make that our, our base address. Here, actually, I don't think that'll matter. It should be all right. Um, again, just so I don't get weird griping and stuff like that, I tend to actually like to do this. We'll just go ahead and set that to zero. So, and the main thing here is we don't necessarily want it to be read as a um, as a sign integer. We just want it to be read as a, an integer by itself. Um, and then here we're going to actually want to use that AOB address plus that instruction offset. Because that one we have set up to where it's it's actually the number of bytes between where the AOB string starts and where that address is. So like in this case, it's going to be 2. That's what we'll end up having to pass to this function to check it. But as you can see, that's really, you know, it's not super complicated. And basically this gets us set up to where our register symbol function will still work just fine and everything else will just work in the same and the only thing we're doing is how we set that base address and we're at 64 bit we got to read that offset figure out the um, instruction address and then add those two together to get our address plus offset equals base address whereas here we're just straight reading the integer because it's 32 bit um, and then this way we're you know well it may not necessarily be a full 64-bit number, but we're ready, we're prepared for that here, and then here we're just going to always return a 32-bit at most. So let's go ahead and copy that. Stick that in our cheat table here. Execute it so our functions are available. Um, one thing you can do, I think it's... 
control A or no, control shift A, or control alt A. Yeah, so control alt A if you're in this window so that way we don't have to do a full script. Um, and then even there I can still use that base address. Okay, so get opcode address. And the way we set that up was we're going to go ahead and set step 0A. Let's keep using the same conventions here. EKR step 0A is going to be our symbol name. And then we're going to go to, uh, just want to go ahead and grab a few bytes here. Control Alt, Control Alt C, and so here we can see we want wildcard these. cut out completely or let's go ahead and make those wild cards and add those last two. So A B zero zero. And then like I said we just need an offset of two. And get us to the actual address we need to read. register that symbol. Oh, this is AA, so we don't want this to be a string. <coughs> and that should be pretty much it for this step. Target is 64 bit. So let's execute that again and try this one more time. So there we go. So we can see we've properly set this to our PTR step 8. Uh, and basically, we can even go ahead and double check that a little further. Make sure we're actually pointing at the right at the right address here, and we sure are. So. As you can see, not too overly complicated. Um, go ahead and bring this back up and correct it here as well. Yeah, okay, there we go. I did. Oh, I had that set. Anyway, so as you can see here, now we've got our get opcode address function set up so that way it can work with 64 bit or 32 bit. You know, it doesn't really matter. It'll just be however, we're, you know, whatever process where a target you know our target process is it'll check that and then do a court you know do what it needs to do to return the proper address um.